I am in so much trouble. I need your help. My team is responsible for our Kubernetes cluster explorer, and I don't know anything about it. Nodes, pods, namespaces. I need help. Wait, I know. I'm going to hire someone. Does anyone out there have 12 years experience? Congratulations, you're hired. I can't believe we found someone with 12 years experience. That's totally awesome. The first thing I need you to do, and I need you to do it quickly, is help me out with this cube stake metrics thing. What can you do, and can you show me how it's done? What I'm gonna do next is show just how easy it is to integrate a Kubernetes environment into New Relic. First, I'm gonna install the cube state metrics and the integration, and show just how quickly that integration can be done. Then we'll cover observability and those four elements, metrics, events, logs, and traces. I already have the command copied into my buffer, so let's use it. I'm just going to download the cube metrics, and then I'm going to run them. Next, let's confirm that they're running. All right, everything looks good. Okay, Hotshot, that was pretty simple, but I can't sit around in a command line all day looking at metrics. How are we going to integrate our Kubernetes environment? You have something called New Relic on your resume. You said you were an expert. I need you to prove it, and I need you to show me how to do it. Now that we have the cube state metrics all set up, let's walk through the New Relic integration. I'm going to head over to one.newrelic.com, where I'll show you how to add data to your environment and just how easy it is to bring in a Kubernetes environment. This is the New Relic 1 interface. Let's see how easy it is to bring a Kubernetes cluster environment into New Relic. First thing we're going to do is add some more data. Now there's a couple places you can do this. This is a brand new account, and as you can see I have a few next steps. Add more data is located there. It's also located over here, and you can pull down your drop-down menu, and there's add more data here. We're going to use that one. When you add more data, there's a lot of different options. You can do it from back-end, front-end, and mobile applications, as well as cloud and platform technologies, host operating systems, and more. We're going to select Kubernetes. Now, it's very, very simple to bring Kubernetes into New Relic 1. You can see your license key is right there. You're going to set your cluster name, the namespace. You can set it up for unprivileged if you wanted to. And then you have a few options. We're going to keep all these options selected. So let's name our cluster. I'm going to keep the namespace as default, and I want to move down below. Now you do have a choice for installation method. You can use a Kubernetes manifest file or Helm. We're going to use a Kubernetes manifest file. But I want you to see that Helm is very simple too. There's just a couple steps that you can copy and paste into your cluster, and you can run that. Let's go back to manifest. So we're going to download the manifest file. And it's as simple as that. Now we're going to head over to the Kubernetes environment and we're going to apply our manifest file. All right, so the next step is to deploy the integration using that manifest file we downloaded. So I've already uploaded it to this cluster. Let's go ahead and apply it. And that's it. We've just created the integration. Let's go ahead and confirm the daemon set was created. Everything looks good here. Let's go to the next step. All right, now let's confirm that the agent is running. All right, everything looks good here. Let's go to the next step. Let's head back over to one.newrelic.com and finish up the integration. Let's select listen for data and wait while the data is received within New Relic. Doesn't take that long, maybe a minute or so. Once it's done, we can explore our data. And just like that, you set up an integration between your cluster and New Relic. It was really only two steps, cube state metrics and then the integration. Now, let's walk through some of the features of the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. Okay, Slick, 
That was simple enough. You proved that you know what you're doing. But what's next? How do we look at metrics? Where are we going to get the data from? I understand what the Kubernetes environment looks like within New Relic, but how do I use it? Now that we've established an integration to our Kubernetes cluster, let's take a look at the New Relic Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. Let's start with some metrics. Now let's explore the New Relic 1 Kubernetes Cluster Explorer environment. You can see the pods, namespace, deployments, node that we have here. When we talk about observability, we're really talking about four things, metrics, events, logs, and traces. So let's take a look at some metrics. If we mouse over our cluster, we can see that we have a few metrics available to us. Let's just select one of these pods. And we can see some metrics coming in already. One of the nice things about Kubernetes Cluster Explorer is we're bringing a whole bunch of data together. You can see that we have metrics about the container, the parser container, including the CPU core usage and the memory byte usage. But we also have application metrics coming in. This is a guestbook application. So we see some web transaction time and some throughput metrics. If we'd like more information about our application, we can check out C application details. And now we're brought right into the application itself where we can see app decks, throughput, any error rates that are happening, as well as transactions and the web transaction time. All right, smart guy, you're starting to prove your worth around here. I'm thinking about giving you promotion, but my boss wants to see events. How do we see events within the cluster explorer? Where are they? Now that we have metrics covered, let's move on to the next topic, events. Once you have metrics, you're gonna create thresholds and thresholds are gonna send events. You could also have events based on your application, your Kubernetes cluster, or your operating system. So let's take a look at events. Let's head over to the events tab and see if we have any events. As you can see, the events have already been pulled in based on the integration and we can easily do some searches. There's even a quick button here for warnings only. Let's pull up one. On the right hand side, you can see the events that are coming in and you can look through them. That was very impressive. Thank you for showing me how to do that. Now I understand why they call you a data nerd. But here's the next one for you. What about logs? We got logs coming out of everywhere. We've got logs coming out of our clusters. We've got logs coming out of our applications. I want to see some logs in that cluster explorer of yours. Show me how that's done. That covers events. So now we have metrics and events. Next up is logs. Logs are extremely important, and the Kubernetes integration made it very simple to bring in our log files. Let's check it out. Let's head back over to the overview. Now let's check out logs. Let's go find some logs from, let's check out that parser application again. Another nice thing about the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer is when we bring in logs, we're bringing them in context with what we're looking at. So if I selected the parser container and I want to check out logs, I'm actually looking at logs for that specific pod. And you can see that the container name here is our parser container. Now I may not have very many exciting log files here, but you can see how easy it is to bring logs in and filter them to the specific pod you're looking at. Very impressive, wizard. That's what I'm gonna start calling you now. Wizard, you showed me metrics. You showed me events. You even showed me logs. I didn't think you can do that one. But I've got something for you. I've got developers ringing me day and night. They want more information. We've got a lot of operational views that you show me, but I want to go deeper. I want you to show me traces in that environment of yours. Bring up some traces. So that covers metrics, events, and logs. Next up is traces. This is where the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer really shines and where developers really start to pay attention getting into the nuts and bolts of how long their applications are running in the various different components really helps the developers find those long spans that they can correct and easily make run faster and improve their code. Let's check it out. 
Let's check out one more thing. We talked about metrics, events, logs. What about tracing application data? Let's open up that parser again. And in the lower right hand corner, you see traces application. It's going to bring up all of the spans that have been happening to this application. What we really care about is the span that took the longest. So let's select the trace duration. And we see that we have a over 500 millisecond trace going on. So let's open that one up. And this is where developers really want to start focusing their attention on. I'm going to expand everything, open up a couple more things here. What you're looking for here are parts of your trace that are taking the longest. So we have the post message. And we can open it up and look at metrics for that one. We can check out other parts of our application to see where things are taking. And this allows us to really dive into the parts of your application that you need to focus on to improve. The faster you can make your application, the better all around it will be. Very impressive. I took what you showed me and I took it to my boss. I talked to her all about Melt, metrics, events, logs, and traces. But you know what? She came back at me with a question. She wanted to know about Prometheus. I had never heard of Prometheus. She wanted to see it. And you know what she asked me? She wanted to know if I could show her some prom QL queries. I don't know what a query was. What can you do? I need to impress her. So we've covered all four components of Melt, metrics, events, logs, and traces. How about one more thing? How about we add Prometheus to this? If you remember way back when we started, the integration included a checkbox for Prometheus. Many Kubernetes users use Prometheus. So we wanted to make it easy to bring the Prometheus data into New Relic. Let's check it out. And one of the advantages of the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer is the fact that you can query your data using PromQL type queries. So let's move into query your data. And let's switch it over to the query builder. In this case, I want to change it to PromQL style. Now I can start creating PromQL style queries. So let's type out one. I'm going to paste one that I have in here. So we're going to rate the cube pod container status running for five minutes. Now let's run that. So you can see how quickly it is to bring up data, even using PromQL. Now, here's one of the advantages of New Relic. You can take your PromQL style query, and let's say you wanted to learn some NERCL. That stands for New Relic Query Language. If you just switch back over to NERCL, you can see that it automatically translates that PromQL style query into an NRQL language. Very simple to do, very easy to learn. Well, that was simple enough. Now I'm going to be able to show off to the boss. In fact, I think I'm up for a promotion. I think I'm going to be able to show her everything I need. Uh, what are you doing? I'm, I'm making a video showing everybody about New Relic's Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. Why are you wearing those sunglasses? I, I didn't want anyone to know it was me. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, take off the sunglasses. Okay. Uh, and when you're done here, I'm going to need you to fill out a TPS report. All right, folks. I think I need to wrap this up. All right, let's wrap this up. We've covered a lot of topics today. Let's go over them. We now have full observability in our Kubernetes environment. During this video, we went through several steps. We set up cube state metrics and the integration to New Relic. We checked out the metrics available. Next, we looked at both events and logs, and we sent those to New Relic as well. Then, we looked into application tracing. Finally, we looked at the Prometheus Open Metrics integration. We were able to bring all four metrics, events, logs, and traces into the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. It doesn't take much to bring a Kubernetes environment into the New Relic observability platform. Remember, Melt, by its very nature, is a set of disparate tools. In today's case, we applied Melt to Kubernetes and showed not only how easy it is to integrate, but also how the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer allows you to achieve observability. My name is Kevin Downs. Thank you very much for watching this video.